Hello Mentonsologists, you are watching Scientific Medical Nonsologist YouTube channel. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the 10 MCQ questions on adult death nursing including digestive and cardiovascular disorders and all other disorders. So this video is for BAC nursing students. Daily MCQs will be uploaded on this channel so don't forget to watch these videos daily which can enhance your knowledge and stick to the study required to be a good nurse. Okay, for each MCQ questions, you will get the answers with explanations explained in very easy language and also you will get the brief explanations on answers of MCQs. So watch the video till the end so, so that you will get most of the knowledge in just remains of this video. So watch the video without skipping. So in this particular video, we are going to discuss about this. These all MCQs which are based on cardiovascular diseases and digestive disorders and all other disorders in our nursing. So our first MCQ question is during which phase of cardiac cycle does the heart relax and fill with blood and, and your options are first one systole, second one diastole phase, third one arterial contraction, death one ventricular contraction. You will be given 5 seconds to solve these questions. So your time starts now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So the answer for this question is diastolic phase. So why diastolic phase? So here is the explanation for this question. As you know, cardiac cycle consists of these four steps. What is systole and diastole? Systolic means contraction where the heart contracts to pump the blood throughout the body. But what is diastole? Diastole means opposite of systole that is relaxation. In diastolic phase, the hearts get relaxed and allows the blood to fill in the heart. During diastolic ventricles relax and expand allowing blood to flow in it. Okay. So now let's move to the next question that is what is the most common cause of peptic ulcers? Here are your options. That is first one helicobacter pylori infections. Second one stress. Third one excessive alcohol consumption. Death on spicy foods. And here's the time starts to answer this question. That is one. Five. five two, four. Three. three four. Two, two, five. One. The right answer is helicobacter pylori infection. What is helicobacter pylori infection? Helicobacter pylori infection is a bacterial infection. Helicobacter pylori is a bacteria which interacts with stomach mucosal protective layer which protects the stomach from stomach acid. As you already studied anatomy and physiology, you know the stomach contains innermost layer that consists of mucus and consists of SCO3 that is bicarbonate ions which are resistant to acids to protect the stomach cells from HCL which is acidic. What is H. pylori bacteria does is that it directly interacts with stomach lining in the most layer and, and make the mucous layer protective layer of stomach very weak so that it can't protect itself from HCL acid. So this H. pylori bacteria weakens that mucosal protective layer of stomach by producing toxins and enzymes which in such a way that HCL present in stomach can cause direct damage to the uh, stomach cells starting inflammatory response so this inflammatory response can ultimately can lead to development of peptic ulcers which are which are nothing but source so here is a pathophysiology of this process which can ultimately can lead to development of peptic ulcers which are which are nothing but source so also other factors can cause peptic ulcers like uh, alcohol consumptions which can increase hcl production so if increase hcl production scan or take the mucosal layer and cause inflammation to the stomach cells, ultimately developing peptic ulcers, alcohol consumption, spicy foods, stress, and all other common factors. All of these factors can irritate the mucosal lining and also increase the production of HCL, which can ultimately can lead to development of peptic ulcers. So this is all over the uh, peptic ulcers. So now let's move to the next question. That is third question. That is which of the following is a common symptom of GERD that is gastrointestinal reflux disease and your options are first one abdominal pain second one heartburn third one constipation fourth one fever and the timer to answer this question starts five, five four three, three two, two one and the answer is heartburn most common and primary symptom of GED is heartburn so why heartburn happens how heartburn happens so let's discuss it deeply okay so what happens in GERD is stomach acids present in stomach flows back into the esophagus which can irritate the esophagus innermost lining and cause inflammation that irritation and inflammation is filled by the patient as a burning sensation in the chest which we call heartburn why that backflow happens there may be the many reason for that so one of the reason is that backflow is due to as you studied anatomy already there will be a stomach wall which 
separates stomach and esophagus. Weakening of that wall can cause backflow of acid from stomach to esophagus, which can cause burning sensation in patients suffering from GERD, that is gastrointestinal reflux disease. So now let's move to the next question that is, what is the main symptom of celiac disease? And the options are, first one, abdominal bloating, second one, muscle weakness, third one, joint pain, fourth one, headache. And the timer to answer this question starts here. Five, four, three, two, one. So right answer is abdominal bloating. So what is abdominal bloating? Abdominal bloating is a sensation of fullness or tiredness caused due to accumulation of gases in the stomach, which can cause abdominal distension due to accumulation of excessive gases in the stomach and give the sensation of fullness and tiredness for the patients. Okay. So why there is accumulation of gases? So let's study over the that. So what happens in celiac disease? Celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder which is allergic to gluten or protein found in many of the foods like found in wheat, barley, rye and other foods. Some of the foods contains a protein called gluten which can initiate this autoimmune disorders that is celiac disease. Actually celiac disease is already present in that person. It, it is a genetic disorder which is already present in a person. So if that person ingests or eats gluten contaminated food that gluten can initiate inflammatory response and trigger human system start the inflammation process and accumulation of gases so how this happens let's study about that so when the celiac disease persons ingest gluten as soon as gluten reaches the small intestine for the absorption which can trigger human system and the gastrointestinal tract will be so sensitive to the gluten as soon as gluten comes the body triggers inflammation process that can cause intestinal villi to become inflamed and damaged and flattened. As you know, intestinal villi increases surface area for the absorption. As the intestinal villi are flattened, become damaged or inflamed, normally absorption can't take place in this situation, which can lead to malabsorption. Due to malabsorption of carbohydrates, these undigested carbohydrates can go through with further fermentation process, leading to the more production of gases which can cause abdominal bloating and also due to altered gut microbes celiac disease can also alter the compositions of the gut microbes the community of the microorganisms living in the digestive tract changes in these gut microbes can affect the digestion and fermentation process potentially potentially leading to bloating and other gastrointestinal symptoms these are the reasons why there will be a production of gases which can cause abdominal bloating okay so this is all over the celiac disease so now let's move to the next question that is what is the most common symptom of heart attack that is myocardial infarction and the options are first one chest pain and discomfort b shortness of breathing c thought nausea and omitting d thought fatigue fatigue means weakness okay and the timer to answer this question starts here five four three two one and right answer is chest pain and discomfort. Chest pain is a hallmark symptom of myocardial infarction, which is a sensation of crushing and squeezing in the chest, which can also relate to arms, neck, shoulder, jaw and back. Chest pain, which is also called as angina, that will be prolonged and may present with other primary symptoms of infarction, that is nausea, vomiting, sweating, dizziness and fatigue. With chest pain, these all symptoms will appear at the same time. That can indicate the myocardial infection. So this is all over the myocardial infection and primary symptoms of it. So now let's move to the next question. That is six one. That is which type of cholesterol is considered as good cholesterol, as it removes LDL from the bloodstream. And the options are first one HDL cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, VLDL cholesterol, total cholesterol. And the timer to answer this question starts here. Five, four, three. Two, one. So the right answer is HDL, that is high density lipoprotein. Actually, there are various types of cholesterols. So in this video, we will discuss about these four only. HDL cholesterol means high density lipoprotein cholesterol. It is considered as good cholesterol because it prevents atherosclerosis. So for the students who don't know what is atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis is the buildup of fatty deposits that is plaque inside the coronary artery which supplies the blood to heart. 
so that can cause the blockage in the coronary arteries which can ultimately can lead to myocardial infarction or heart attack STL transports the cholesterol from all of the body parts to the liver where it can be metabolized or excreted from the body STL decreases the cholesterol levels in the bloodstream ultimately preventing myocardial infarction that's why it's called as good cholesterol but whereas LDL do opposite to this that is LDL transports cholesterol from liver to all of the body parts LDL increases the cholesterol levels in the bloodstream increasing the risk of developing plaques inside the arteries leading to myocardial infarction so that's why it is called as bad cholesterol so this is all over this question so now let's move to the next question That is the eighth one. Which of the following is complications of untreated hypertension? And the options are first one arterial fibrillation, second one myocardial heart failure, third one aortic dissection, fourth one perineal neuropathy. And the timer to answer this question starts here. Five, four, three, two, one. So the right answer is heart failure. Among all of these options, heart failure is the most common complications of untreated hypertension. Because what hypertension does is hypertension increases workload on the heart as there is a narrowed arteries. In hypertension, narrowed arteries causes increased resistance on heart, unable to pump the blood effectively to meet the metabolic needs. So to maintain adequate blood flow to the organs, heart starts to overturn that increased resistance, narrowing of the artery by increasing its workload. It beats very hardly so that it can minimize the resistance caused by the narrowed arteries, increasing the workload which can cause heart failure so this is all about this so now let's move to the next question that is ninth one what is the hallmark symptom of peripheral vascular disease and the options for these questions are first one intermediate claudification second option is chest pain third option is dyspnea that is difficulties in breathing fourth one is palpitations five, five four three, three two, two one so the right answer is Intermediate claudification. So, what is intermediate claudification? So, it is a pain. First of all, what is PAD? That is peripheral artery disease. Peripheral artery disease is same as like coronary artery disease. In peripheral artery disease, there is a blockage and narrowing of the arteries that supplies blood to lower extremities such as legs, which can cause and decrease blood flow to the legs in such a way that during physical activities such as walking or exercising on that time, due to insufficient blood supply to the lower extremities, the muscles in the legs can experience Intermediate claudification, which is characterized by muscle pain, cramping, weakness in affected legs, heaviness, discomfort. So, this discomfort mostly occurs in cock muscles or other muscles, including thigh muscles, buttocks muscles. So, our next question is seventh one that is, which of the following is a common symptom of heart failure? And the options are first one hypertension, second one peripheral edema, third one bradycardia, fourth one decreased respiratory rate. Five, four, three. Two, one. So the right answer is peripheral edema. So peripheral edema is the swelling of the legs, ankles, foots, which is a common symptom of myocardial failure, that is heart failure. So myocardial failure means in which heart is unable to pump the blood effectively to meet the body's needs or metabolic needs. So, so what all metabolic needs are required? Heart is unable to pump the blood effectively to meet the body's metabolic needs. It is a hallmark symptom of myocardial Failure. That can occur with other symptoms including shortness of breath, fatigue, feeling weakness after a smaller exercise or after eating. Okay, so heart failure. In which response blood can back up into veins, causing fluid is causing fluid in veins leak into surrounding tissues, especially in dependent areas like legs, ankles, and feet, which can lead to fluid accumulations in those areas, resulting in so, over this. so our next question is what is the main goal treatment of stable angina and the options are first option is reduce oxygen demand second option is decrease the pb third option is increase the heart rate fourth option is normalize blood glucose levels five four three two one so the answer is to reduce myocardial oxygen demand so the primary main goal of treatment of angina is to reduce the myocardial load heart load there are various types of angina so in which we want to discuss about two types that is stable and unstable. Stable angina that occurs during exercises or during any changes in metabolic activity it occurs on certain conditions. But unstable angina will be always present even with resting pace, even with minimum metabolic activity, even with minimal exercises also. Unstable angina will be present. 
so that is the difference between these two stable and unstable angina so main goal of the treatment of stable angina is to decrease the myocardial workload by making the patient to sit in the comfortable position and decreasing the metabolic activity and oxygen demand by keeping patients in a comfortable position we can minimize this effect and also to increase the blood flow to the heart we, we can administrate nitrate which causes a dilation of the blood vessels in the heart which can increase the blood flow to the heart increase of physical and emotional activities like stress can increase this condition can worsen this condition to reduce stable angina symptoms we need to first of all decrease the workload and decrease oxygen demand second point is to increase the blood flow to the heart by administration of beta blockers calcium channel blockers other vasodilators so this is all about the 10 mcq questions on digestive and cardiovascular disorders for uh, bs nursing students so see you guys in the next video till then Keep watching, keep learning. So thanks for watching. Let's end the video.